So, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 36 is out now. We're still in Beyond the Grid. I think we're at the halfway point for Beyond the Grid because it's ending in May. So we've got a few more issues left before we get to the next story arc. And I feel like we're hitting those big story points in Beyond the Grid. That's why we had that big reveal at the end. And we've been teased at other big reveals later down the line for the story arc. But we'll get there when we get there. But... On my community tab, I said I had a few problems with this issue, being story-wise and art. And let's talk about the art, because the art... Well, we'll talk about the art right before I get into the um, plot and recap it, but the art for this issue is just all over the place. I have no idea what Simone wants to do or what direction she gets when drawing these characters, because her wide shots, where there's a lot of characters in one frame, they don't look very good, their faces look all smushed, they look very square eyes or have no faces, they'll just be making weird expressions. While when she does close-ups and profile shots and just like close-up shots and close-up shots in general, they look really nice. Like she puts a lot of detail into them where they've got shiny skin, you can see a lot of detail in their face and how expressive they look. But when it's a wide shot, they just look funny sometimes, they'll have a face pulling off, but it just looks really, really weird, and I don't get it, like, what is she doing, what direction is she getting, like, her her long shots are bad, but her good, her close-up shots are good, I have no idea what she's doing, they didn't say they changed artists, I'm just, she just wanted to flip the art style midway through the comic and just change it, it just, it just looks weird. Okay, let's start off with the recap and talk about the issue, breaking it down bit by bit. So the issue starts off with the rangers and the people who are rangers who can't morph. They are going from planet to planet and defeating the Crimson Raiders, I believe they're called, Predator's crew. And they're going from planet to planet, they're helping people. They have the people that had their powers taken from Draken and they're helping too. I'm sure they can't do much, but they're rangers and they are able to help in some capacity. And that's really cool, although the art for what these panels is really weird. There's like one where you see Heckle in the background, and there's someone in the corner just screaming really loud. I can't tell who this character is, but oh my god, their face just looks like something out of like a Da Vinci artwork where they're just screaming. It looks so fucking horrible. This is what I mean by the art is all over the place with this recap as I talk about it bit by bit. So... They go from planet to planet saving people, and it's a really cool moment, I mean, they're helping each other out, they're saying rangers work together, it's a really cool moment. But then you get back on the ship where everyone is sparring in the dojo, and TJ's there cool, so cool that TJ is there. And Corone and Cameron reveal this line saying some of the rangers aren't happy that they've still got their powers. And this is where I rolled my eyes how dumb this line was because Cameron says it's not very rangerly to resent that we've still got our powers. Which is right, Cameron is right about that. But the fact that the other rangers are upset that they don't have their powers and they can't use them to save people. They've been in this dimension for so long and they don't know if the people they love and care about are okay because a big battle just went down in Beyond the Grid, not Beyond the Grid, in Shattered Grid before the stuff went down. It would be nice because if TJ's in there, because Andros's line is, are you holding up alright TJ? And TJ goes, I'm good, how about you? It'd be nice if there would be like a ranger that would walk up and maybe tell them how they feel. I'm sure they would do it in the TV show just for like a moment saying, hey, you can do anything without your powers, but... It'd be nice to actually get a character confirm that they are upset that they don't have their powers and they're a bit upset that they can't do anything and they're worried. We sort of get it later down the line, but it'd be nice to hear it from a ranger who doesn't have their powers. So, like, as you scroll through, you just see other rangers just walking by and they're just giving other rangers a stink eye. Like, you see Mia giving... Ah, uh, Andros the Stinker. You see, I don't know who this is next to me. I can't tell. I think it's hard to tell because they've got the red jacket, they've got the hair. It It's hard to tell who that character is. Someone's going to point it out and say, hey, this is such and such. But like I said, because the artwork is so bad, not bad, bad, but because it's just drawn funny, 
It's just them giving like a funny face as they're leaning up against the corner. Like you see Shelby in there. Like you see a lot of rangers who are upset they can't do anything because they don't have their powers. And I understand where some of the rangers are coming from where they say I miss my powers, they made me feel important like I was connected to something. They even admit that was selfish. It's just lines like that where they're just like complaining that they can't do anything and I'm sure every character would complain in this situation where they wish they could help, they wish they could do something but the fact that it's like more than one ranger they point out saying they're upset they can't do anything, yes it makes sense but I don't know why it just rubbed me the wrong way for some reason like it seemed like everyone's just angsty against the Promethea team because they have their morphers, they connect to the morphing grid and they can actually do something while out here and the others are worried that they're gonna like that they'll be might be starting new lives up here but I don't know I just felt like Margaret made that this big out of character moment for a few characters and that's what upset me I could be exaggerating it could be overreacting it could be overthinking I don't know someone tell me but that just it just rubbed me the wrong way for some reason now we also go over the solar tricks glitching out and they need some sort of power to sustain it but we'll get into that at the end of the issue because that's the big reveal at the end we then cut to the rangers having lunch in the cafeteria and this is where the art goes all over the place for me that I was talking about at the start of the video. I'll have the panel up on screen but this is where the art looks really weird and really nice. The scene, like the top three panels and the panel with Ari, they look very nice. They look very nice, they're very shiny, the lighting looks good, a few lens flares. It looks very very nice for the close up shots same with Ari that looks very nice as well and then when you see the bottom ones where you see Remy getting upset and storming off those look really bad like not bad bad like I said they just look drawn funny and different and then the bottom one when you see Kimberly smiling that looks like a very nice drawn panel as well but anyway Kimberly says she's sorry for not trusting him or trusting Ari because her ponytail is in a twist and I love Heckle's line where she goes I needed to tell you that I, I'm sorry that I had my ponytail in such a twist and because Heckle doesn't get earth slang and earth like the way that Kimberly talks he goes which was a good he goes which also looked fetching so <laughs> that kind of made me laugh um, where she goes I'm sorry that my ponytail had a twist and Heckle's like well you looked good in it even though it's in a twist so that was that was kind of a funny line to me but Remy is upset about Kimberly and Ari being friends and this is where it kind of gets confusing because I'll get into it a bit now because you can see it both ways. Now Remy isn't upset that Kimberly and Ari are becoming friends because her and Corone have this sparring match where they give this big speech where they apologize for not trusting each other. This is just the, hey I'm sorry I didn't trust you even though I feel like they cross that bridge before they just keep doing it for some reason. But Remy has this line saying, these people Ari needed, sought out without knowing she was seeking her rangers, her team. These are the people she belongs with, not me. So Remy is concerned that, like, like she's not concerned she's sort of glad that Ari is making friends for being alone in the universe for so long and I get the feeling that Remy might have feelings for Ari it's just hinted at it's not known and what I was saying earlier that the way on like the next page or the page before that whatever I show up it's the page where Kimberly and Ari are talking and it does look very romantic. No, I'm not going to say it looks like they're giving each other fuck eyes, but it's a very, it's a nice drawing, but it's, it's, you can take it both ways. Are Ari and Kimberly going to have a relationship? Are they not? Are they just very close friends? But the way I see it as, as I read that line, um, Ari's glad that she's making friends out in space because she's been alone, alone for so long. Same with Ranger Slayer Kimberly. She was alone for so long. She did meet the Mighty Morphin team briefly and make friends there. But Kimberly has also been alone because she's from the world of the Queenless. She hasn't had many friends. She lost a lot of friends. She lost a lot of people that she cared about. So for her to make like a brand new friend, which is sort of like her Trini or her Aisha that she's hanging out with, and 
being all buddy buddy with, that's really cool. I know a lot of people are going to be worried that Margaret might make her lesbian. I'm not going to say that's a good or bad thing. I don't think she will do that. Like, she would have to, like, get permission from Hasbro and, uh, Sub like, not Saban, because Saban doesn't own Power Rangers anymore. I know they had to approve some stuff from Saban, but I get the feeling she might have to approve some stuff by Hasbro, because when stuff like that, uh, goes in a book, a lot of people are going to pick it up, like comicbook.com and a lot of news outlets online, and it's going to go trending, so it's going to change the character in a big way for the character we know and loved, and if you read comicbook.com or one of those clickbait news articles, they're going to be saying, Kimberly is finally lesbian, who knew? And then when you click on the article, it'll say, if you read the comics, Shattered Grid, I mean, if you read the comics Beyond the Grid, Kimberly, Ranger Slayer from another universe, has fallen in love with an alien, and it's going to totally bait people into clicking their article, so... I don't know if Margaret's going to make that move, making uh, Kimberly a lesbian or bi, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was just a wait and see situation because who knows where they're going to go on for that. But I feel like I've rambled on enough about that. We then cut to Mike and Tanya in the library and they're just talking. They're just talking about their lives and they're glad to be chosen together and they embrace and a kiss. Now, I didn't think these two would actually kiss or get intimate and become somewhat of a couple. I don't know if they are a couple. They kissed. Does kissing make you a couple in comics and storylines? I think it does in some points. But anyway, it's cool that they kiss. Like, they've been very close to one each other. Like, Tanya has been very concerning for Mike and vice versa. They've been trying to help each other out. So, like, the seeds for these two characters getting in a relationship or being close to one each other in a loving way has been like sort of pointed out through the past few issues. I might have pointed it out myself, I can't remember, but it's cool that we're getting payoff that these characters are getting lovey double with each other. My only complaint is, Tanya, what the heck? This is Zio Tanya. I thought she had a thing for Adam, and Adam had a thing for her. Oh, I guess she moved on anyway. She probably moved on, doesn't care about the Zeo Adam, who cares? Um, but it's cool that these characters are getting in a relationship. It's good for Mike, because it gives Mike someone to care about who's out here, because Mike goes for a lot of shit on the next page. So on the next page, we have Mike having night terrors about everything that's going on. You hear Leo calling out to him, saying he's trapped on the other side. He can't get out. Lord Dracon's killing us. Help me, help me. Please don't let me die, Mike. Mike. And then he hears Tanya, and Tanya's pleading that she doesn't want anyone to die. And Mike just wakes up and has this traumatic stress. And it's a really cool panel where you just see him screaming like, I love the art stuff for this, where you just see his face just drawing open he's just screaming so Mike is having like the most trouble with what's going on it would make sense from Mike well if you read the watch the show I nearly said read the show but if you watched the show this is Magna Defender Mike he went for a lot of shit he died twice or he died more than once so of course he's been going to like have all this stress he left his brother behind he's got someone else he cares about and he's afraid of losing them as well it's just a really messed up moment but you see Tanya come in and they talk because they heard that Corridon 5 got blown up by Predator he drained it overnight and this is a really cool scene not a really cool scene an emotional scene but just the close-up on Tanya's face where you see the tear go down her eye and Mike and Tanya embrace it's a really cool moment I like it and Ari says the solar tricks is completely diminished, they need to repower it, and they go to a planet where it's completely powered by Zeo crystals. And it's really cool. Like the fact that it's powered by Zeo crystals is really cool. And it's Tanya the point that out as well, going, it's made of Zeo crystals, and I love Ari's response by going, Tanya, is that a bad thing? And if you know what the Zeo Crystals is going to do, it's going to give them a big, big power boost because the Zeo Crystal, if I remember correctly, it's always evolving, it's always getting stronger. So put this with the Solar Tricks, who knows what it's going to do? Who knows what it might do? So hopefully, 
it helps them out and that's where the issue ends and that pretty much wraps up my review for issue 36 of Mining Wolf and Power Rangers. Yes, I had my problems with it, and the art was all over the place. Like I said at the start, it didn't know what it was doing. Some shots were really nice, some shots were really bad. I'm sure if I was an artist, I couldn't do better. I would be a terrible artist. I just know how to point it out when I see shots like that. But it was an alright issue. I had my problems with it plot-wise and how stuff was structured. I get the feeling that we're in the third act for Beyond the Grid and we're going to be in the third act right now because things are going to be heading to a close in a few issues. I mean, next issue comes out in March and then we got April and then we got May. So things are wrapping up very quickly and I'm worried how the pacing is going to go down because they've hinted at someone is going to make a very important sacrifice we don't know who it is um hopefully it's not ranger slayer kimberly i would love that character to be around for like fucking forever i love that character but like who knows what's gonna happen it's just weird and we're just gonna wait for like necessary evil because i think now that we know the next storyline's coming out and we know the White Ranger is going to be involved, everyone just wants to see that. It's like, move over, Promethea team. Let's bring out the White Ranger. But anyway, it was an alright issue. It wasn't bad. I had my problems with it. And I'm sure when I read this in the trade back a few months later down the line or a year down the line, I might have indifferent feelings about it just reading it like in one sitting where everything connects in the issues. But we'll find out, so overall, alright issue, not bad, not good, just alright, and that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next time in the next video. If you enjoyed this review, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and tell me what you thought of the issue in the comment section down below. I do apologize for my rambles, I'll probably timestamp them if you want to skip them. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.